What's up, everybody? This is Enlightened Masculinity Podcast. I'm your host, Yogi Chris, PhD, founder of Ninth Limb Yoga, and host of Enlightened Masculinity. Also, captain of IMC Nation. I live here at IMC Base One with Arashapar Dibazar, founder of IMC Nation, and the Guardians, Fernando and Sultan. This is the first base. We have five bases. It's a movement. It's growing. We got talks of Space Six, Space Seven, and you know, there's hundreds of men in the movement around the world. They're coalescing. My vision is 300 bases. That's going to be a 15. That's like a, a small army you know, around the world, because these guys, they're tough, they're beasts, they're disciplined, they're smart, they're philosophers, they're a loyal, they're aligned, they're dangerous, man, it's like I posted on Instagram the other day, or maybe it's yesterday, uh, you know, a group shot, we get, we get group shots almost every camp, you know, and we just did our 39th camp in a row, uh, and, and really there's many camps before that, they just weren't monthly, and I said dangerous to any enemy, it is, I mean, these guys look dangerous. It's like 18 of us in the living room right there. Able to protect what's mine. But is your man, is your man able to protect what's his? Is your man dangerous to any enemy? I'm not dangerous just because I'm me. I'm dangerous because I'm IMC Nation. I got a whole militia here in San Jose. And every month we have, you know, a small army that comes here. We are IMC Nation. That's what I said on the post. So that's what this is, IMC Nation. You could look it up on hashtag or, you know, go to the websites or anything like that. And this episode is basically like love language. I don't really like that phrasing because I think there's like books on it and they break it down. I, I don't follow that. Like I haven't read any books on it, but the idea of like, how do you like to be cared for? And self-care as a preliminary question, how do you like to care for yourself before you like make all these decisions about how you like other people to care for you? And this is one of the questions uh, dialogue that was at the recent private party we do. We have the speed dating show that uh, is very conversational in its um, in its angle. I guess I don't the the angle that the show takes. Besides being with social dynamics experts and practitioners, people that are studying body language, studying influence, studying the social psychology and psychology of females, the psychology of males as something different because that's not what's taught. It's not taught that women and men are so different. It's taught that they're the same. And that's why people are so miserable in their relationships. They don't even understand. They don't, you know how I know you don't understand because just where you come from when you talk. And let's say, for example, a girl corrects me on a, a social media post about relationships. Just peering into her, you can tell she doesn't have a, fat, a happy or fulfilled relationship. Because a woman that's happy and fulfilled, as my women know, don't go and commenting on other guys' profiles about, you know, correcting them. That's not what a happy and fulfilled woman does. So it's, it's like you shot yourself in the foot there. You gave away your cards when you come in with any kind of corrections about that. And it's not that I'm right. I'm like the fucking, you know, authority, final truth on the matter, but I'm just doing better. And I'm the truth in my own life. And the truth about me is that, and I think about a lot of people, good people, is that we willingly correct ourselves. We're the first to correct ourselves if presented with a better idea, a better technique, a better strategy, just something better. Like, man, I want to be the best. So I will take on that better strategy. And that's what happens with when you find out like how a person likes to be cared for or even how you like to care for yourself. When you find a better way to care for yourself, you <laughs> It's very easy to replace it. If it's more pleasure, less pain, less heartache, more benefit from it, you just you switch it out. No problem. And uh, so the nature of these parties and these shows, you know, is documenting how the dynamics go between these men and women. And there's a rotation. Everybody's looking beautiful, handsome, wealthy, clean, put together. They're in a talkative state. It's a perfect social. It's a perfect laboratory, really. There's a lot of biofeedback when you watch the film or see the picture content or whatever, especially for people studying this stuff. If you're not studying body language, you would misinterpret. And it's amazing when you learn more about body language, you interpret it differently and it makes more sense. And that's what happens in relationships or people out there with psychology or with communication skills is you think you have it. You think, you know, everybody thinks they know. It's one of the most difficult things in the world to get a man to admit that you don't know how to do relationship. He's got so much ego solidified around his strategy that he thinks he's doing it right. Because people don't like to be wrong. They like to be right. But when you learn a better way, <laughs> then you slap yourself in the face. and You're like, fuck, man, why didn't I learn this sooner? Years I wasted doing other stuff. 
it wasn't necessarily a waste. You don't want to look back on life like that. It got you to where you can be now to learn it. But when you find a better way, you see the error of the past ways. Wow, that's wrong. And same similar thing with self-care. Like, for example, pursuing drugs for myself years ago. I mean, I didn't have the phrasing of self-care. That wasn't like a concept I had in my head. But that's what I was pursuing to make myself balanced. Okay, okay. Well, I've definitely upgraded since then replaced habits over and over and over again. And so recently at this uh, party that we did, and I was a participant in it. So I did this rotation and I was part of the question. And, you know, so much, I could give you the question and that gives you some value. You could go and take that and talk about it with anybody. I don't think many people are going to want to talk about it with you. Um, maybe if you have, let's say there's all guys on Zoom right now, you have a girl, I mean, she's probably going to eat it up like self-care and how you like to be cared for. And you know, so much of the value of coming to these parties is the feedback you get from the staff and the coach or her coaches and is the biofeedback you get from the film is the situation, the context that you put your in, put yourself in, which is you're looking your best. She's looking her best. You all are there to present your best selves, which is how the relationship should be. Go and handle your bullshit by yourself. You're going to hang out with me an hour a week, two hours a week four hours a week, six hours a week, intermittently, whenever you hang out with me, give me your best. Don't wear your makeup out and then come over here and expect me to love you maximum when no makeup, because you love yourself maximum with no makeup. Why'd you wear makeup out then? Whose opinion were you caring about? Oh, it was just for me. Well, then why don't you wear it for yourself just around the house? Why don't you wear it for me then? How about this? I'll tell you, I like makeup on a girl. It makes you look prettier. Is there anybody here to argue with that? Can, can you really argue? If, you're, if your makeup doesn't look, make you look prettier, you're not wearing it right. You know, because that's the only reason it was invented. That's the only reason it continues. That's why the industry is so big. It makes you look better. I don't have the luxury of becoming more attractive to you by just slapping on some paint. I have to study. I have to improve my mindset and my communication skills. That would make a woman more attractive also. It just doesn't do the same thing. It would be like me wearing uh, some oil on my face to make it look moisturized. It does, that does make, you know, it's like me getting a little tan. It does make me more attractive to you. That's like you improving your mindset and communication. It does make you more attractive to me, but it's not the same thing. So, <clears throat> self-care. In this question that I went through on the dialogue, uh, in, the, in the dialogue at the party, you know, I realized uh, it's not a question that I entertain much. And oh, and by the way, I guess, I mean, we're already in it, but this gets posted on all the podcast platforms. So like, share, uh, you know, leave a review. That's always encouraged. Click the links in the, in the description, get involved with what we're doing. You know, I'm one man, I'm part of a whole movement. I am, I'm a, a leadership role in a very large movement. I'm not the only one thinking this way, talking this way, being this way. There's guys online right now. There's a lot of guys that watch this recording. And if you're watching this recording and you want to be in par uh, part of it, be involved, then click the links. So by working out this question in the dialogue with whoever my partner was at the time, some white girl, and, uh, you know, I realized that my life uh, is closer and closer set up to just be something like self-care all day. and there are definitely responsibilities in IMC Nation. We have what's called curtains up and lockdown. And in between lockdown and curtains up is a, a lockdown period where you're with yourself. This includes sleep, but there's time at the end of the night and there's time in the beginning of the morning that you're just with yourself. And you don't just fuck off and do nothing. Like, for example, we take our cold shower in the morning. <clears throat> That's part of self-care. Even though it takes discipline and it's not the most pleasurable thing when you're doing it, it can be, depends on how your mindset is. But typically it's, it, you know, it's kind of jarring. It's not like the best, your favorite thing. I'd rather eat some Reese's cups and watch cosmic disclosure, but I have some things that I got to do that make my day better. And the fulfillment and the good feelings that I get from doing well with my day more than offsets the good feelings of, uh, you know, doing some immediate gratification, sense pleasure stuff in my lockdown. So my lockdown preps me. It primes me for my day. At the end of the day, at the end of the night, you know, before I go to sleep, my lockdown process primes me for the next day. It primes me, really, it primes me for great sleep and or, or great rest. 
and the rest is what primes me for the next day. So that is what more would be considered more self-care. Throughout the day, I'm doing responsibilities. I'm hosting different staff meetings and messaging a lot of people and uh, you know, taking notes and sending emails and or whatever. And I'm even going to yoga. Let's say I go to Bikram yoga every day or you know, four or five days a week. Or I go to jujitsu. Like today, I go to jujitsu. Man, I consider that self-care, even though there's a lot of pain. Sometimes I limp away from the yoga room because I stretch too much one side, not the other. Or I limp away from the uh, jujitsu mat because, you know, tweaked a, a joint or something. But that's self-care for, you know, the self is not just the body and the mind and the psychology. And it's different for a man and woman. Like I wouldn't recommend a woman go and fight every day for self-care. Some women do. And that you, do, you do what you got to do. I'm just saying like what I would recommend. When you find a better way, there's other ways available. Like a woman that's fighting every day, you're very tense. If a woman was like into jujitsu or boxing or something, you're very tense. There's a lot of tension in your forearms and in your, in your muscles. And if there's tension in, you, in all of your muscles, your rib cage, there's definitely tension in your diaphragm. The body is going to acidify with that tension. And it's just not the most feminine qualities to be hard and stiff. Like we want soft and flexible and supple. That's what men want. And if men say they don't want that, they haven't seen a better way. They haven't been with a soft, supple woman. And if they were, then the woman was so toxic and bitchy in other areas that they, they became repelled to the soft, supple. They were with a dancer once and she was psychotic. And so now they don't want a soft, flexible. They want the, okay, well, you got one bad reference for that. For a man to lead properly, he needs many references. Doesn't mean he needs to fuck a thousand women. But there's something to be said about the man that gets with or has the ability to. And we could say a man does, but until you have women around you wanting to be with you, it's you, it's just an idea that you could get with a lot of women. Go out and try to get a lot of women, and you'll see, whoa, there's a ton of obstacles with this to get a woman to willingly. And if, if you're not going to use like alcohol or drugs, then you know, then you need some game. You need some real conversation. You need to be able to give her that dopamine hit through conversation. What can you say to her so that it's just like a, I used to call it pleasure bombs. There's just like a, that happens in her heart, in her vagina, in her head, in her whole being through what you're saying. And it's not just, you're like making shit up. Like, look at this imaginary apple in my hand. And you're just like making something up. You're, you are, it's, it's the qualities and how you talk with her. So I, anyway, I'm talking about self-care, you know? So there's definitely a distinction for me to be made. Like, there's the things I do throughout the day, what we call service. And then there's the things that I do in lockdown that are rejuvenating, that are more selfless or, or uh, selfish, let's say selfish and selfless. And so, I mean, that's my whole process. Like self-care, cleaning my room is a kind of self-care. Uh, studying shows that entertain me. So even if I'm going from Looney Tunes to Avengers to any cartoon, all the way to uh, survival videos and uh, cosmic disclosure, disclosure videos, or ghost vid any anything like, like I'm studying, or even movies like Fight Club, or there's a classic one, or you know any of these. Looking at characters, like I am examining and receiving and extracting qualities from what I'm watching that I want in my being. There's a lot more intention in what I'm watching and what I'm doing watching these things, then the common person, which is most people, when they're watching, they're escaping. There's an escape element for me too. I'm getting out of this narrow human condition that I've become so habituated with, so accustomed to, that even my responses become narrow. And then my destiny becomes all but certain. If my responses are habitual, if my communication habits are habitual, my behaviors are habitual, then you might as well just put the variables into an, a, a simulation time forward, and then you can just predict where is this going to end up. The thing you can't predict is how the culture changes. So even if your behaviors don't change and the culture changes, then you will get different outcomes. And for the most part, culture continues evolving forward. So if you keep the same habits, you're actually going to fall behind. So whatever we predict as your destiny, you're actually going to fall short of that if you don't change. Because even though the culture is uh, completely cultish, and there's all kinds of just brainwashing mumbo jumbo nonsense throughout it. They do get better. Technology gets better. You know, there's overall, I, in my opinion, although it fluctuates, there's less violence. Less brutal murdering than there was in the past. 
because there's more accountability. There's more globalization. It's hard to escape the video camera, the phone camera. You can't just do dumb shit. People do. There's also 10 billion people on earth. So more people are going to get away with it too. But as a ratio, it's more peaceful. And uh, what was I saying? Self-care, my intention, extracting these qualities from what I'm watching so that when I'm in service my next day, I'm calibrating my character to create different effects, I'm calibrating behaviors, how I think about things, how I perceive what's happening. So someone says something to me, I perceive it differently than someone else. And then I react differently than someone else. And then I'll get a different reaction from the other person. It, 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 it ping pongs back and forth, echoes throughout your day. By the end of the day, you have a completely different day. Like imagine a woman, she gets a menstruation once a month, she gets the cramps, she's not feeling good. That's going to change how she reacts to people. And that accumulates over two, three days. You have that, man, you like, you created a lot of chaos around you. It would happen to a man too if I had some fucking cramps deep in my stomach, turning and making me contort my face. So it, it made people think I was upset at them when I was just uh, responding to a tummy ache. But nature didn't give me such an intense experience once a month every month for 20 years and then the other end of the coin so the, the two weeks later she's ovulating and she's horny as fuck and she starts talking to all the guys that are in her rolodex because that's sperm wars if you read sperm wars that's just what she does you see it in a thousand different manifestations get with a woman be with her consistently, and you will map out her menstruation and ovulation behaviors. It's not that men don't go through cycles. It's just not the same. Self-care. So educating myself, especially on my own psychology, the science of the mind, how the mind works, the physics of the mind. See, the physics of the mind don't need a bunch of new rules. Maybe new discoveries that will render previous discoveries obsolete, but it's not, we don't just keep slapping on band-aids and slapping on new rules and contingencies for, well, when this happens, gravity is like this. And then when this happens, gravity is like that. And near a piece of lead, gravity is like this. And near a tree, it's like that. And on this planet, it's like that. And on this planet, it's like that. No, it's, you know, whatever the equation is, the gravitational constant times the radius of the two objects over the square, well, whatever. Whatever it is, and that's the force of gravity, depending on how far you are from the center of mass. Now, that is going to be rendered obsolete at some point, 500 years, 5,000 years, 5 million years from now. We're going to discover something deeper about gravity that will render, but we're not to, when we're slapping on different rules, like when you're in this area of space or when you're in this, uh, like, then you know we don't understand gravity. We got to keep making up stuff. And that's fine if that's what we need to make it work. Like if we need to build a shelter, so we need to understand that what goes up goes down and, and then like you got to make a lean to or something like if it works, that's valid. It's valid if it works for you. But when you find a better way, when you see an ET come through if anti-gravity or uh, enhancing gravity when they're on a little planet mining for minerals so they can make what you would be five pounds, but they can make you 160 pounds because they can enhance gravity under you. They understand something about gravity that we don't because that wasn't the square root of the radius and, and this or that. That was put some energy through a piece of plate and then pull your mass down. And it's like, what the fuck? How are you even pulling? Okay, you understand something about gravity, we don't. And when you study male psychology, female psychology and the social dynamics, you understand something about relationships and relationships all the way from just the first greeting, hi, hi, hi. You, you just met each other. You're strangers, now you're acquaintances. That's the beginning of the relationship in, this, in a very general sense. Because later you're married or whatever, you have kids with her, or you've been with her for 50 years or something. It all started with a high or some, something like that. Maybe a high on Instagram or you just saw each other and then later you said hi. It started somewhere. So that's the beginning. All the way through the 50 year relationship or the 50 lifetime relationship. And that is such a important aspect of life. Such a undercurrent that motivates so much of your behavior, your fashion, your health, how you talk to yourself, how you feel about yourself, your confidence. Like, no matter how confident you are as a woman, if you're with a man that you're obsessed with, in love with, he's treating you good, 
you're so fulfilled in the relationship, not because you're in the first week of honeymoon or the first month of honeymoon. It doesn't mean that you can't, it, you can't be fulfilled in the first week or month, but I'm saying there's something like aligned with who you want to be, how you want to live. However confident you were before that, you get more confident. You're now much more confident being in a relationship. However confident you are as a woman, you'd be much more confident if you were in the right kind of relationship. You're not maxing out on confidence without the relationship. That's like saying a man is maxed out on confidence, but he doesn't fuck any women. Whatever level of confidence you're at, get with some women, your confidence is going to go up. Nature put it in you. It's rewarding you when you understand psychology, when you understand physiology, goddamn reality. When you understand reality, that's what reality. So in my self-care, by studying psychology of my own mind and the psychology of women and men. So there's two separate things. There's like, there's the psychology of my own mind, which is to say the, the mechanics of the mind that how it works in everybody, how it works in fish, how it works in deer, how it works in ETs, like the mind. But then there's the mating mind. It's all one mind, but it's useful to separate so that you understand. Uh, so the mating mind, the, the psychology, yes, it's conditioned through upbringing, but there's also some innate things. And there's reasons why it's conditioned a certain way. I mean, there's a lot of things. Uh, human existence is a lot of conditioning. We're not born with all the instincts and knowing how to use an iPhone and the internet and how to use forks and knives and dress ourselves. Like the, the whole human existence is conditioned. Like we are born very helpless compared to like a deer that's born able to run or something. It's able to do basically everything it's ever going to need to do as a deer, except maybe it's, it's testicles need to drop. It needs to hit puberty, whatever puberty is for that fucking animal so it can mate. Other than that, it can do everything. Humans are far from that. So yes, there's a lot of conditioning, but there's reasons for the conditioning. There's also a lot of mind washing and just nonsense in the conditioning. Matt, now in recent 50, 70, 80 years, mass media is just like <sighs> steering everyone's consciousness. And even before that, I mean, the printed word, a lot of people couldn't read. So then the priests would read to everybody and it would just be mind washing shit. Bullshit. Okay, so part of my self-care, it makes my service better. It makes my mind and emotions ease, more at ease. Even if I've made mistakes, knowing where I made mistake takes you out of a condition of confusion. Confusion is very disastrous for the system. The system being the body, emotion, psychology, energy, all of that. The whole, the system. And a condition of confusion is not good. You want to have a grip on some variable in your condition so that you don't feel helpless. You don't feel uh, disoriented. And psychology and mating psychology is a really great handle on your life because it's, it's so important. You're here because of a relationship that happened before you, sexual relationship. And you may or may not have kids or produce kids, but you're definitely going to be relating with the opposite sex in a sexual context. They may be ignorant. You may even be ignorant that you're operating in a sexual context, that you have this mating agenda to how you're treating them, how you're being so polite, how you're being generous. How, and of course, if you're having any erotic thoughts or whatever, why you're putting yourself in proximity, why you're opening or crossing your legs a certain way, why you're leaning in or leaning out, why you're looking or not looking. <clears throat> you see the squirrel at the park doesn't do any extra actions. If it wiggles its tail, that means something. If it's digging in the ground, that means something. If it's looking at you, that means something. It's, do, it's doing something for a reason. It's not like super well thought out, like it's, it's planned ahead its day with the schedule and at 3 p.m. I'm gonna uh, go dig that nut up. Like he just, but every action has a cause because, or, or it has a cause, yeah, there's a cause for it. Because if it didn't, then there's high chances that, it would not be useful to its survival. It would be doing things that are not on track with its survival, which is important because in a population of squirrels, the ones that are doing better, more survival actions survive. And the ones that do frivolous actions die and their genes don't pass on because competition is real stiff in nature. So every it, it's, it is that every animal in nature, every action they take or make has a purpose behind it. Doesn't mean they don't make mistakes, that they don't improve their behaviors. That's you know evolution. But there is a past evolution cause, evolutionary cause for why they're doing it. And 
despite the mind washing and the cultural conditioning of humans, we also, every communication means something. Every eye flick, every hair flick, every body scratch, every body turn. And it may have a lot to do with how the person is thinking inside. So it may not be obvious the cause outside why they're doing that. They just told themselves something and then they're reacting to what they're telling themselves. They're reacting to how they're perceiving the situation. Still happens to us. It still happens to me. Just because I talk, I've talked about it hundreds of times doesn't mean I still don't experience sometimes my body reacting to my perception of something. And that's not even what it was at all. So uh, where was I? So everybody communication makes a difference. Everything, everything matters. And um, so this, this thing, this game, this relationship game, you're going to be playing it. You're going to be in it and you're going to be the effect of things that happen in it. Or you're going to, let, let me say a different way. You're going to experience things that happen in it. She cheats on you. She leaves. She brings up some bullshit from her past. That's just like irritates you to no end. She has some uh, interesting behavior or she's not giving you attention. She turns away. She rejects you or she rejects your advances or she admires you. I mean, there's going to be all sorts of things that happen. Uh, you know, she may admire you in certain ways or talk about you to her friends or introduce you to your family or people that she knows or something that, you know, understanding the psychology, it may throw you off and understanding the psychology is going to bring a lot of ease to this thing that is so important throughout your days, throughout the rest of your life, for your whole family, for your whole tribe, your group, for humanity. And that is self-care for me. And of course, uh, yoga, yoga, stretching. I love yoga stretching. That's the basic answer. Someone's like self-care. Oh, yoga meditation. People, they don't know what meditation. They do their own things. They think it's meditating. They're tapping into visualization. They're astral traveling. They're uh, practicing remote viewing. That's not meditation. And yoga. You know, there's this one girl at Bikram Yoga. She's kind of cute. She's Asian. Super bendy, super bendy, way bendier than me. She's got that bone, that bone shape. I can tell because her muscle development is she's she's actually got thick muscles. I don't I don't know. She's an interesting looking age. She's like a little little tank, and uh, even though she's not like Butch, she's just man, whatever. So that's great. She's actually she's on the demo team for the Bikram Yoga, which are you know they're fantastic at stretching. This girl, I've observed probably four or five times at the end of yoga. You know, it's a 90 minute intense class. You sweat. I'm in a puddle. It's, it's so much sweat. I got to drink two thermoses just to like kind of almost get close back to a, a normal. A lot of exertion, a lot of exhaustion. <clears throat> and this girl, four or five out of five times, every time. The class is over. Everybody lays down. It's the final pose, which is just you laying down, relaxing. And there's a lot to that. I've given many podcasts on that. Calming your heart rate, the muscles releasing tension, blood flow balancing, oxygen levels balancing. And there's ways to, to know, to perceive the relaxation of the nervous system. But not this girl. This girl lays down for about 23 seconds and then gets up every time. As soon as the teacher is like, okay, everybody, and make sure you stay for at least two minutes, blah, 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 and have a great day. Be liberated, be happy, blah, 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 blah. Namaste. Everybody says namaste. Boom, that bitch is up so fast. Grabs her towel, walks out. I'm like, you're on the demo team? Here's what goes through my mind. You haven't even started doing yoga. You're on the yoga demo team and you're so flexible. And obviously you've been coming here every day for years, probably. You haven't even started. You're just flexible. You don't have a fucking clue. The farthest you've come is maybe some self-talk while you're stretching, where you were doubting yourself. Ah, oh, hey, this hurts. And you're like, just do it anyway. And like you override. That's I, I hardly, that's hardly considered yoga. It's so barely. That, that is something. That is you pushed through, overcame a thought pattern, a behavior which is called a vritti, a system of the mind. But you're not calm or relaxed. And I can tell she's super nervous talking with me. She, I had to keep adjusting my body language to be more timid than her. If you talk to a girl and she's skittish and girls are skittish because they've been abused. And I mean, she's 
older, she's a full woman now, but who knows what she could, she was a two-year-old, five-year-old, eight-year-old at some point, fucking 16-year-old, who knows? She, she could have been a 23-year-old. She's a little girl. She's a little female. She went, so when she's skittish, man, I don't keep facing her. I'm facing her. She's leaned away. I don't get that she's not interested in what we're saying. There's disinterest, but then there's, there's um, discomfort. She's uncomfortable. I'm not like right up in her face talking to her, but as she's uh, turned away, I don't want to appear skittish, but I don't want to appear more invested than her. So I'm adjusting my body language, lean back, turned, looking like I got somewhere to go. And it's amazing. As you do that, she keeps talking more. As you're facing her, it's like she's disengaging. The more I pull back, like I'm skittish, the more she it pulls her in or whatever. Anyway, so I got to do all these adjustments just to, to nurture her in the conversation. Because I know I'm like a scary, intimidating guy at yoga. And if people aren't talking to me, like I, I got to be that social, likable guy. So I put it out there and, you know, she was right there and I was talking. And so anyway, I can tell when she gets up at the end of yoga, this is a skittish girl that's uncomfortable in her own skin, not able to tolerate Shavasana for herself, where all kinds of torrents of thoughts and feelings will come through her, where she'll have tension, she'll relive experiences. Shavasana was such a great prep preparation for me for transcendental meditation, real meditation. It's very similar. Just transcendental meditation gives you a, a tech, a handle that you can really drill this deep. For a Shavasana, you just kind of got to let thoughts flow by and consciously relax your body. And that's about as far as you can get with it. And then just sit there patiently and you get better at it. You get better at letting fl thoughts flow and body relaxing, but there is another technique to add on that, that will sharpen that skill. That's transcendental meditation. And yeah, if they don't take a full Shavasana, full Shavasana, the heart rate's got to drop, get back to normal sweat glands, uh, calm down. At least, I mean, you're in a hot room, so you might still be sweating, but there's a calmness that if you don't, get that calmness, then you get up and go into your day, you're going to take that excitation, that excitement that's still in your nervous, your nervous system is still excited. You can take it into your day and you're going to make excited. Excited isn't necessarily a good thing. Excited sometimes, you know, there's excited emotionally. It's, it's not an emotional excitement. It's a nervous system excitement, very similar to nervousness. Nervousness and excitement are very similar. So you could tell a nervous person that's driving or a nervous person that's talking business or talking with their partner or whatever, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to say and do things that are going to agitate the other person unconsciously. So it's very important to take Shavasana. When we were beasting on the calisthenics routine, I took Shavasana after beasting every day, every time. If I ran out of time, I cut my beasting short to Shavasana. That's part of the beasting. So I don't even think those people have started yoga. It's similar. I was telling my girl and in silent flute lecture uh, Monday, I was like, when the Bikram yoga teachers, when they're talking, I get this, this movie scene comes to my head from No Country from Old Men, where the assassin is talking to this really old uh, uh, gas station attendant, and the gas station attendant's like fumbling his words, and the assassin's kind of pressuring him, and like he's going to kill him or something, just kind of, you know, getting in his face, and, he, it's, and, and the gas station attendant fumbles his words, and the, and the assassin's like, you don't know what you're talking about, do you? And the guy's like, sir? And he's like, you're a bit hard of hearing, aren't you? I said, you don't know what you're talking. You have no idea what you're talking about. And I mean, he was right. And that's, man, when the Bikram teachers are teaching, I'm like, Jesus Christ, you don't know what you're talking about. But I'm going to do it because I'm there for other reasons. And it's like when I see the yoga practitioners, they get up so soon after uh, when Shavasana has started. I'm like, you don't know how to do yoga. Man. And when the lady says she's been practicing for almost 25 years, I'm like, you're still in year one if you don't know how to do yoga. If you, if you don't know how to do Shavasana. Anyway, this, this uh, is getting sidetracked. So yoga and meditation, there's a quality how you do it. But I mean, in a general sense, yoga and meditation are self-care for me. I put the phone away and I'm in self-care. Now, there are many, uh, I think the whole morning process and evening process, something that people outside of IMC Nation or outside of relationships with me, you're very ignorant of what our process is. You maybe have some details, but it's also a very different thing seeing it on paper or hearing someone tell you and you doing it. And then you're doing it day after day for years. It will change you and it will change you for the better. Whatever your process is, it's, it's undisciplined. It's different. There are elements there that are very creative and uniquely you. You have unique elements to your morning and evening process that could be very good. But you have a bunch of other mumbo jumbo that's, you know, just making you very normie. You all are very normie. 
Now, the IMC guys, they're not normie. They're less normie. They get into bases. They're much less normie. They come around to camps. They're much, much less normie because we've designed a lifestyle here where I'm, in a, I'm living in my own creations. A lot of people have to carry their creations with them. I'm immersed. I'm enmeshed. I'm in my creations. I live at a base of my creation. I do business all day. That's part of my cre- I, I created. I created the camps every month. AZD said, let's do a camp. You pick the date. That was the first camp. Let's do a camp. You pick the date. You get everybody there. That's it. He did nothing else. I did it. Now, he did it by speaking to the world, attracting the world. He's got a way of talking, a wisdom, an experience that I believe is far beyond mine. Even though he says, and I have the clip, it's really nice. He's like, Yogi Chris, he's on my level. And I'm like, nah, I'm not on your level. He's like, you're on my level. You're on this path. I'm on this path. Okay, that's great. That's heartwarming. And in some ways, maybe it's true. But I mean, my videos aren't getting thousands of views. You know, I'm not attracting the audience. He's, yeah, thank you. He, he's attracting the audience. So I am harvesting what he's doing. And now I'm training other guys to harvest and organize it. And would anybody complain that makes it very far? Would Lone Wolf complain that I got hard on him for not participating? Would Josiah complain that I sold him on camps? Would Freedom Ranger be like, dude, you're fucking up if you're not coming to a camp? Now that he's living at base two and his condition has improved so much, his communication skills so much. Bro, I think your little brother's going to join. I'm telling you. I can just tell that guy's going to, like, you know, anybody that I've gone, quote, hard on or or had to, like, yell at or give it, like, even Adam. Adam, I removed from the newsletter. I was like, I'm fucking removing you. You didn't reply to my message. You said blah, 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 blah. And he's like, Please, bro, don't remind me from the last, uh, the newsletter. Like, my bad. It won't happen again. This and that. This and that. Whatever. Whatever the fuck he said that made it all right. Yeah, I was looking at that during a private moment. I was like, man, is this because you went through a breakup? And I was like, did this happen right when you went through the breakup? No, it was like a month and a half later. Okay, okay. Now I feel better. But it's like, if you're around and we went through that, are you really upset that I went through that with you? No. But I'll tell you, the guys that left are. They're like, Yogi Chris, he repelled me. I liked AZD, but he was mean. He was aggressive. He yelled at me for no reason. He was unreasonable. He was power hungry. He, he let the power get to his head. He was too, like, bro, how did I prevent you from learning from him? You keep, you keep justifying that. So what the fuck was I talking about? Self-care. Uh, Go qualities of your routine. Okay, then uh, how do you like to be taken care of in a relationship? It's it's pretty basic for me, and I think I reserve the right to improve my opinion. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, some people, let's say my girl, might say, "Well, you said this that back then," and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm changing my mind now." Okay, what I say now is more important than whatever I said back then. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me what I said back then. Now here's the new updated version. Okay, so I reserve the right to update this. So how I like to receive care or how I like to be taken care of is twofold. The first one I'll say, and it may be kind of obvious. The first one is I want to be taken care of however you want to take care of me. I want to know your unique way of taking care of me. Now, I don't need you to wipe my butt and fucking spoon feed me, but what, like, Is there any sense of nurturance or care coming from you towards me as a woman? I mean, coming over and, you know, giving me a good time physically. That's, I mean, sure, that counts. Man, that balances my energy. That makes me feel confident. It's something I like. Thank you for giving yourself to me. This is one of the few things that you can really give me. I I don't want your money. I'll take your money. I'll make good use of it, but it's not like I'm getting with women so that they give me money. You know, what are you going to do for me? You're going to, you're, you're going to build, you're going to go buy my car for me. You're going to build something for me. You're going to provide me. No, you're going to nurture me some way and sex nurtures. What else? How else beyond that? Because it's obvious if you're going to be in a sexual relationship with me, there's, you're going to be giving me yourself, but what else? How else do you, I want to know how you want to, do you like to buy gifts? Do you like to write me poems? Do you like to draw me pictures? Do you like to massage me? It's, it's related to sex, but it is a separate thing. Some girls like massage, some girls don't. 
I like massage. So a girl that likes to give me massage, then kudos. Like you could say, that's how I like to be cared for. I like to be massaged. But I don't like to push that on any girl to massage me because she may not be inclined to that. And it's not that important to me. What would be more fulfilling for me is how you want to do so. How do you want to nurture this? <laughs> That's a funny text. Yeah, it's true. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Kat doesn't realize. I'm telling you, you are so molded to be with me. It's, it doesn't matter who else comes along. A younger girl, a, a super pretty girl, a fucking rich girl. A, 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 like, it, it's a, you've, you've carved out a path for yourself and a niche for yourself. You, you are like that, that one creature in nature that there's just, you're the top in that area. Whatever creature, you choose your creature. And you've made yourself that way. And I'm okay that that's not how I found you. I think that if you want a great relationship, the woman changes herself for the man. The man changes also for the woman, for women, for his life, for his purpose. You know, and this brings me to my second point. How I like to be cared for. How far I've come with it right now. Which, uh, you know, like I said, I reserve the right to change. And then we got to go because we got mastermind meeting coming up. So excited. And the new camp releases tomorrow. Everybody, this is Divine Reflection. It's a five-week training. It's going to be excellent. Five weeks. Last month was also only four weeks. So an extra week is nice. So five-week training. Early bird starts tomorrow until Saturday morning. Just jump on that. Shouldn't even need to be messaged about that. And if you're catching the recording, go to imcbase1.com. Look at the deets. Uh, if you're catching this way in the future, then just whatever event is there. Uh, this will be camp number 40. So we're at 40 in a row right now for these. I mean, really, I did nine before that. So it's really 49, but whatever. When I started numbering them. Okay. So the second thing, the girls are like, what's the fucking second thing, Chris? God damn it. And I'm like, don't swear, bitch. And, and they're like, sorry. What's the second thing? <laughs> okay. So the second thing is how I like to be cared for. So first thing is care for me however you want to. I want to see your unique expression and that will develop. Whatever your unique expression is today, as you get more comfortable, feel more safe, feel more confident, get more familiar with the relationship, our likes and dislikes and how to communicate, your authenticity will enhance. That's, I mean, I really think that's like why Kat and Megan are with me, why other girls will get with me, despite that I already have two women, because you become more authentic. You've lost yourself as a woman. You have lost yourself. You are pleasing other people. You have molded yourself to please other people. And you're like, well, I would never, do, I would never change for a man. Well, you've changed for every man and they're not even giving you shit. You need to find one man to change for. And then you can really middle finger every other fucking dude. Cause you got a man who's got a tribe who remember that picture. We can defend what's ours. And then you can really relax and develop your authenticity. You don't even know you're numb to it. You're, you're numb, you, you man. So the second thing, after you develop your authenticity and you're caring for me naturally, the second thing, which probably would be the first thing, but I, I put it second because the first one was more digestible for people. The second thing is give me no friction at all in how I live. I like to be cared for with absolutely zero resistance to my movement that I, I feel like that cares for me. I feel like that's, I, I like you to be stuck to me like glue, not necessarily like on my arm like that, but just like following my lead as if you know how you see like the little duckies following the mama duck i'm mama duck in this analogy and you just keep following me because your sur fucking survival depends on it and if it doesn't then convince yourself so that you act right because as long as you think that it doesn't you're going to act like some independent bitch that's going to irritate me and we're going to repel each other after not too long so fucking put on your act actress hat and pretend like you need me to survive like we were walking through the jungle and you'll act more right and I'll be more fulfilled. And when I'm more fulfilled, you'll be more fulfilled because I'm the leader. So when the leader is more fulfilled, the follower gets more fulfilled. When the leader gets more powerful, the follower gets more powerful. When the leader is more safe, the follower is more safe. You want to bolster and improve the condition of your leader so that you improve your own condition, but not if you're an independent woman, then you go out there and you just got to do your own thing by yourself. And you're not going to be able to do it as good as me. I'm a winner. I'm older. And if you're a woman and you're older than me, and I can't use that argument on you, well, I mean, just blow, that, that, like I said the other day, you fucked up getting older than me and you still don't have a man. So you need to pretend now you're a young girl. You need to put on your young girl hat, forget all the conditioning that you think you've learned because you learned the wrong things. 
It's like you learned the wrong English grammar. And now you're going and trying to write something and nobody's buying your book. And you're like, I keep putting all this work. I'm so trained of this and that. You learned it wrong. You learned the wrong grammar, the wrong vocabulary, wrong definitions. You're fucking up. And you're, the worst part about your fuck up is you think you're right. That's what's inhibiting you from learning. You think you already know. So the second way that I feel cared for is give me no resistance to my movement. I, I don't know if that qualifies correctly as how I like to be cared for, but there's something very special about I need to do business. You're here to just be in my presence. Like a, a woman that loves being in my presence, you're going to get interacted with. You're going to get the best of me because, man, I, like, why wouldn't I give you the best? The woman that gives me resistance is going to be met with irritation. I might put the phone down and interact with you, but pretty soon I start resenting you because I want to make money. I'm here winning in life in my position where I am. You don't know my history. You maybe know some things I've told you, and I'm not going to bore you all with my history right now, but I have climbed to this position by being super dedicated and disciplined. And I'm not about to lose it because you're not getting enough attention. You can go away. A woman, some women will say, well, that's too demanding and no woman will put up with that. And that's where I can laugh in their face and say many women have and currently are. And if you leave, I will feel the minor loss of you. If they leave, I will feel, honestly, I've cultivated my mind and my neurology and my emotions that if they leave, I will feel the minor loss of it. Now I could say that there's a big word saying now watch they leave. And I'm like, Oh, it hurts so bad. Well, I'll get over it. I'm still going to do my cold shower. I'm still going to eat my discipline. I'm still going to fight. I'm still going to do yoga and I'll get the fuck over it because I've been through it many times. I've had many relationships, committed, loyal relationships, honest relationships, uh, fulfilling relationships. I've had many. And then they didn't last because I didn't understand psychology and cause and effect and what to do here. So, um, yeah, giving me no inhibition, no resistance to my movement. One of the things, you know, uh, I don't have a, a specific example, but there have been mm, at least a dozen examples of both my main girl and my second girl. I, I wouldn't say my second girl is not a main girl, but it's, you know, there is a chronology here and it's not just about the time because there's an evolution that happens with chronology. The longer you've been with me through my evolution, the more hours you've clocked with me, man, there's just no comparison to that. Your evolution is further along. It's just like, so there's been at least a dozen instances where girl, my girl has in some way admired me being with another woman or uh, applauded me seducing another woman, how I've done it. I've explained it to her or whatever, or, or somehow uh, maybe encouraged or it's not that she motivated me, but it was like, um, there was just admiration. She admired me for maybe, maybe how I put another woman in check or which she does often. Actually, they love that women love when you put another woman in check. Uh, if they're, as long as they're in check, if they're in check with you and they see you put another, even if they're not, if they're in trouble with you and they see you snap at another woman and it, it makes sense why she will come out of her fucked upness. Actually, there's something about she's punishing herself. She thinks she did wrong. And when she sees that, no, you're just like that with everybody. And she needs to just change and let go of that ego attachment. Something releases in her. She gets lighter. And that's very nice. That's where in the social dynamics and a man of power interacting with multiple women is what heals a woman. Um, so there's this admiration that the woman, my woman has offered towards me about other women that makes me feel so big and expansive and warm in my chest and belly. I don't call it love because I just don't, I, I use that word so rarely, but that is, that feels so good. And man, isn't that what being cared for feels like? So no resistance to my movement is a, it's a high standard that women can't live up to. And if you couldn't live up to it as a woman, someone else will. It's, it's proven. It's a proven fact at this point. So that's my talk for today, guys. We have Dragon's Lair coming up. I appreciate all the guys that were here in attendance. Divine Reflections coming up. Go to imcbase1.com to sign up for that. All the ladies and gentlemen that stayed on the Zoom stream. Let's take a look. Nice. Good. And I appreciate that. For a woman to be with me, she's 
probably going to need to study me. There's a reason I have 300 podcast episodes. I had 700, but I deleted uh, three channels. There's a reason I have my silent flute program ongoing for almost six years now, over 300 lectures there, private lectures that are more advanced than the podcast. There's a lot of recordings. I have YouTube videos. I have eBooks. This is my life. That's not even going into my dissertation or my wrestling background, which are just whole lifetimes. If you wanted to be with me and understand, and the thing about it is why, why I have no problem at all, zero demanding that a woman that wants to be with me should study me is because it actually makes her better. So that even if she leaves me, she is improved. Like my, one of my exes many exes ago uh, was all about my no fucks given ebook, 65 page ebook with a lot of these philosophies written down bullet point for, for, for everybody. A lot of people bought it. I made like, I don't know, at least a thousand dollars on that ebook. And she ate it up. She would read it and, but you know, she would try to use it against me and quote it to me and be like, but it says here, to whatever. So it was stupid. I know she still thinks about it. She probably still reads it. She probably tries to give it to other guys so that they can improve because the game is legit that's in that book. And if you read that, then you would understand so much about my game, my, my, how I relate with you. And that'll make it easier for you. This isn't arbitrary. It's pretty well thought out. I'm a philosopher monk. That's how I make my living. How do you make money? I make money as a philosopher monk. Some part-time side jobs. I'm a player. Yeah. Pimp and yogi, they call me. That's how I put together the private parties and whatever. But I make so little. I don't even think I make anything. If I did the math, I would make like $100 on the whole party. Considering I pay the models. I pay the venue. I pay for my girl to find the models and whatever, you know? So I make money as a philosopher. This is my philosophy. Shout out to AZD, my mentor who I live with. Shout out to IMC Nation. So thankful. So thankful for everybody that uh, showed up to this. And I'll see you on the next one. Jay Guru Dev, every Wednesday, 9 a.m. Enlightened Masculinity. Oh.